Hey everybody, my name is Jordan. And I'm Steve. And this is The Wilderness. Welcome to our kitchen. Our sink is a pretty decent size. We can fit a ton of stuff in there. I love having the pull down option for this and the grate in the bottom of it is really nice too to just keep everything off the bottom of the sink. We have a four burner stove that's got cast iron all the way across and an oven. So this is just basically an apartment sized setup. Um, we did them both intentionally on this side. That way this countertop is completely open and we can kind of use that for prep space or workspace or whatever. So this is our pantry and our trash can space. Uh, it's tons of storage options in there for our food. And then we've got the apartment sized uh, fridge and freezer option on here. We wanted to have the freezer on the bottom because that helps keep it cool. But I also wanted to be able to open them as opposed to a top loading one just for organization. Tons of storage space up on the top. We've got the bar and spice rack over here, which is a pretty crucial piece uh, addition to the bus there. We did rebar across the front of that, just basically what we kind of had laying around and it does a really good job of keeping everything and it kind of adds a cool rustic feel to it. And yeah, besides that, I got all the cabinets from Habitat for Humanity and I just repainted them. So that was a really cool way to upcycle some stuff. One of my favorite features about the kitchen is our live edge countertops. Um, huge thank you to our neighbors, John and Regina, for gifting these to us. They're a beautiful accent piece. They are black walnut countertops. Our neighbors pretty much taught us how to do it from start to finish, how to turn them into countertops, and they're probably one of my favorite features of the bus. So our curtains are made of burlap. I really wanted to be able to have light come in but still have the privacy behind that. And I got these from another YouTuber, but basically um, the tops are hooked up there and then the dowel in the middle comes through so we can have different options for letting sunlight in. So actually one of the biggest things for me with the kitchen, I was worried about storage space because you can accumulate so many different kitchen utensils that you think are essential. And we have so much more storage than we actually need. And Steve and I can actually be prepping and cooking back to back and not bump each other. And I've had friends come and be like, oh my gosh, your kitchen is bigger than mine in their apartment or whatever. So it's it really is just about the intentionality of how you build it. And to me, this is all of the kitchen space we really need. So I spent about a year living out of a Toyota Tacoma and it was the happiest year of my life. I'm an outdoor photographer, so I was working and just, I don't know, let a lot of things behind I guess and focused on what I love and I'm just super happy um, and I came home for a little bit met Jordan fell in love <laughs> and she joined me on the road and it was just like dang I'd, I'd love to take you all over but uh, a Toyota Tacoma is a little bit small for a, a guy a girl and two German Shepherds and we went to the Asheville van life rally and that year they had buses there for the first time I think I've shown her pictures and she had to leave early, but she said something about, oh, I'd live in a bus with you. And then when he brought up the idea, I was like, don't joke around about it, because I'll do it. So, so then she trapped me with her good looks and signed me <laughs> up for all this, this work. All right, so welcome to the front of our bus. Uh, or the mud room, we'll call it. We've got an insulated plumbing cabinet right here, uh, so we can take the bus cold places and not have to worry about you know any of our heat or anything failing. Uh, we got a little bookshelf up front. Our map collection over here. We used some some scrap wood and made some speaker boxes because we got to be listening to, to tunes. All right, so welcome to the bathroom. Um, we put a, a glass door to try and keep things open. As we got to the front of the bus, we run out of money, if you can't tell. Uh, so we went some cheap metal, put some extra rock left over from the fireplace on the floor. We were able to reuse the emergency window in here. And we've got a little piece of wood, so we can pop it out and uh, use the other shower head outside if we needed to, or just kind of have this open, you know, if you're in the woods. All right, so then once you actually close our front door, it kind of becomes the bathroom. We've got our composting toilet back here. The his and her set up for all of our bathroom stuff. And uh, we made some side doors over here. We got our, our vacuum and then our, our composting stuff. We just mix in uh, peat moss, our ash, or ash from fire pits, 
uh, wood chips, and then we've got some, um, you know, smell good stuff in there just in case. I thought that composting was going to be kind of gross. It hasn't been gross. It's it's actually not that bad, and the amount of water we're saving and, and the the amount of like I guess ways we're being green by doing so is, is kind of way cooler than using a toilet, anyways. This is different than most buses. They usually tuck their bathrooms on the side or in the back somewhere. Um, but we thought that we would put this big front door and have these walls here that we could insulate fully. Uh, so not only do we have a little bit more of a means of security and privacy, but we also have the whole entire bus, all four sides, and top and bottom, covered in over two inches of foam. If you need some privacy, uh, you can just slide this and uh, do, your, do your business. So this is kind of like our, our living room, kind of the, the living space. My favorite part about the bus is this wood stove right here. Uh, we got it off a park ranger in Tennessee that was upgrading because uh, they had a big cabin, but it turns out that this thing is just enough and more for our bus. We've been in below zero and been toasty in here. So it's, it's a Swiss high flame and we get a log burning. And then once we close this thing down, it'll burn all night. I guess it's probably still got some from last night. Yeah, smoking in there. We put stone in here. Um, you know, buses carry a lot of people and we wanted to put, you know, weight in there. We've got a lot of solar batteries and equipment under the couch over here. And we wanted the bus not to, you know, be heavy on one side especially with the fridge back there. So we thought we'd use real rock. My best friend back home, he does stonework. And this was uh, kind of one of the last jobs he did as a gift for us. So we get to carry that with us, you know, wherever we go. It's, it's pretty cool. And it's local rock from home too. So it's nice to be able to take a little piece of North Carolina with us. So the couch hosts our entire electrical system and a little bit of like long-term storage. Um, but it's kind of really become uh, our dog's bed. Um, and then when Jordan's out of town, some of my buddies will, will sleep on here and hang out. All right, so power. Uh, we're big on off-grid. We actually built the whole bus off-grid in a, a muddy field in North Carolina. Um, we've got 1,200 watts of solar up top that comes into our battery bank down here. Uh, we're just under 900 usable amp hours. Um, it's a lead system, but we've been working with it for two years and it's never let us down. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, the Victron products. I really like having that Bluetooth app on my phone and, and being able to monitor things without having to check too much. Uh, my, one of my favorite parts too, uh, just to use the most of the space, we built this slide out table and we both love water. So this is a map of all the, the rivers and waterways in North Carolina. We eat dinner here a lot, but we can put another chair here, another chair here if we've got friends that are traveling with us. Um, once the table goes in and out of the way, you can then move the closet door and slide that down where we've got some hanging space for both of us. Once that's closed, we also have access to our, our drawers. So we've we folded things and, and, and made a way to make it work, but honestly, we've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and it's like, it's been a blessing to just do a load of laundry and that's it. There's not like a mountain hiding in the closet somewhere, you know? Um, another favorite part is this is our, our laundry chute. Uh, so we, we put our laundry back here. We don't have to have a, a like you know a big bag in the corner or whatever. And there's a magnet on this, so we can just pull that off and when it's full, we do our laundry. The coolest thing about this build, though, is the, the community. We, we built this thing not knowing this is our first set of power tools. Um, and we couldn't have done it without all of the incredible friends we have. You know, we've yeah. got a welder buddy, we've got a, a stonemason buddy. Um, Cold Mountain Conversions uh, is the place where we built our bus. And while we built ours ourselves, there's no way we could have made it look like this if it wasn't for Story and Tara. Um, and all of our friends. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing in life that we've learned, that I've learned, is if you don't know how to do something, find somebody that does. And you know, use your resources and we were like living proof of that, the community that has just totally supported us through this build. Yeah, I, I hope that, you know, anybody that walks in here can can know that like two normal people that like, yeah. you know, I owned a power drill before this, you know, can, can figure some things out and make life work for them. Yeah. All right, welcome to the bedroom. We have a queen size mattress in here, so we have tons of space. Uh, we've got our TV that acts as a second monitor for Steve. And we have a big shelf back here for storage. We have a mini split over our bed, which really helps um, with the heating and the cooling. Also, one of the things that's the most helpful actually is this window right here. We initially installed it just because we wanted to have a window by the bed, 
but we really quickly realized if it feels hot, because we're up so high, if it's hot in here, you can open the window, turn on the max air fan, and it just sucks cool air across us while we're sleeping, which is super, super awesome to have. Um, our lights actually also are in two separate zones, so we can leave the bedroom lights off and have the kitchen lights on. So Steve is a really early riser and I like to sleep in. So if he gets up and wants to make coffee, we can leave the lights off in here and it's a little bit darker for me to still snooze uh, while Steve gets ready in the morning or vice versa. So you can tell the budget was running low. We just bolted this thing together and chopped some things and we added a little scrap wood to it, had some extra stain lying around and we put a deadbolt on it um, just to you know, have that extra security. We could have saved a whole lot of money if I was the same size as Jordan, but we had to chop the roof. Uh, so we raised it 18 inches, um, which I've got respect for anybody that's ever done that. It's a, it's a hell of an endeavor. Um, busting out all those rivets and replacing them. You know, we like the woods and we want it to feel like a cabin, so we tried to carry that through the outside and you know, line the windows with some wood, gave it that same walnut stain as we have inside. Um, up top, We've got uh, our racks made by my good boy, Ty, over here. Grateful for good friends. Jordan would go have girl weekends and Ty would come over and we'd just get to Weldon and we'd have so much fun camping out in there. We, we've been living in the bus before it was finished. Uh, it's just been rad, so grateful to have you here, sir. Uh, we've got our water tanks strapped under the bottom. Uh, you know, we welded them too, just to make sure that they uh, don't move anywhere. They're insulated and they're heated. Um, we like cold weather and we live in the mountains uh, early on. We, we actually broke some things due to the cold, so everything's heated now and taken care of. And then back here's kind of neat. We're still working on it, uh, but since we have wood storage and a, a wood stove, under here we'll fit our firewood and we'll be able to hopefully hold enough to, to keep us cozy for a little while. This thing's a beast. It's a lot to drive. Um, so we, we chopped the bumper and we moved it uh, two and a half feet out. We've got this inset wheel chalk uh, and I bring my motorcycle. It's a a supermoto, so it's on off road, and that's what we'll use to get our eggs and our milk and you know, run into town or go to a trailhead instead of taking this monstrosity. And then we've got our ladder to the roof, uh, it's the you know, the canoe rack or the cocktail bar, you know, depending on the, the day. In order to keep the space kind of clean and, and simple inside, we thought we'd put all of our like fun stuff back here. So it's, it's our garage, it's the tool shed, and where we keep all our gear. Uh, so we can actually fit two mountain bikes back there. Uh, we're still finishing up the construction process, so we do have a lot of tools. Um, but we, we backpack, and I'm an outdoor photographer, so a lot of my outdoor gear is back here. Um, we've got everything from a, a, a heated wood stove tent uh, to hammocks and, you know, our winter and summer gear. So we can, we can kind of do, do it all just from the back of our bus. We totally realize that you know everybody's built to live in a bus, uh, yeah. but more power to you if you're just giving up a little bit to mm -hmm. have a little bit more. Uh, you know we we realize that we all can't make a lot more money sometimes, but you can always spend a lot less and just have a little bit more. Yeah. We've been doing it for a year and a half now, and like no regrets. We, mm -hmm. we survived yeah. quarantine and didn't kill each other. I know. Yeah, that says, says something, right? Something. Like we have found one tiny slice of something that works really well for us. And yeah. It enables us to just live more freely kind of foster the things that are important to us mm -hmm. and like have more days each year that we remember at the end of the, the calendar year and that's, that's kind of the secret to life. Yeah. When you don't have rent, we don't have a mortgage or all these bills, like you know we can go to the islands in the winter yeah. or you know, fill that bar with some, some good bourbon. Yeah, better quality liquor yeah. or and, and, <laughs> whatever. And you know I, I was so scared when I quit my job that I'd be in this position where I could take all these gigs in order to like you know have that same salary. But by, by cutting all of this and, and having a little bit more freedom, now we get to take jobs that we, we like and we enjoy, and now we get to go backpacking for yeah. work somehow. Yeah. So that's it been... just feels like we're really living as opposed to like trying to work really hard so we can actually live the life we want when we're older. I do outdoor photography and travel photography for a living. Uh, it's been wonderful. Um, I've been blessed to work with a ton of outdoor brands over the years um, and uh, state uh, government tourism agencies. And the bus is kind of a, a culmination of you know, our, our dream home and really we can take this, uh, this cabin we've created and then I can plug it into a wilderness and, and get to know that area on a, a deeper level and, and capture it in a way that you know, I see fitting. 
Um, and you know, you couldn't do that through hotels. You, you couldn't do that. And you know, I don't mind sleeping in a tent, but it sure is nice to have a hot shower and to be able to cook a meal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this journey has been really cool. Uh, me and Jordan were actually offered a job. We work for Backpacker Magazine now, um, and we we're actually creating a video series that comes out this May called the Get Out More Tour. Um, and where we're, we're crossing our fingers, we're going to be taking the bus and uh, showing people yeah. a little bit more of this lifestyle. Yeah, it's a, basically an educational series of how to backpack, what gear you need, what to do, what not to do, and uh, just kind of inspiring people to get outside, um, yeah. get out more TV. If you like outdoor um, photography or, or some of the wild adventures we get into, um, you can find me, it's at Steve underscore Yoakum. Our bus, we just made the page, but we're, we're, we're planning plenty of fun for it. Um, it's under Wilderness Bus. Um, underscore bus. Wilderness underscore bus. Okay. And um, we didn't have a name for most of the build. We were going to call it something, but it was a little cheesy. Um, and then we parked it out in the woods in Pisgah National Forest for a long weekend and in the wilderness. And it's kind of like our little homie cabin nest, I think you, so. were pee you were peeing and you like leaned kind of out and you're like, what about, what about this? And the <laughs> bus was like, that's, Ooh, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Instagram handle is J A Meeks M E E K S nine one. Um, it, that's just my own personal page. There's nothing. I'm not a professional photographer. I'm not anything. That's just like a real. She's a total goofball. There's a lot of good behind the scenes footage <laughs> in there. Um, and then if you are interested in following our, our work journey, uh, it'll be called the the Get Out More Tour, mm -hmm. and it'll be a YouTube series coming out this May. Thanks so much for taking a tour with us. Uh, look for us on the road, or yeah. uh, sometimes we we stay home in Carolina for the winter, so if you ever pass through, uh, say hi. Say hi, yeah. Cheers. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well.